In World War II, the Italian campaign was a never-ending series of mountains separated by narrow valleys and swift rivers. The Allies inevitably had to be down in the valleys under fire from the Germans from the heights, which prompted Bill Malden to draw this cartoon in which Willie tells Joe, my God, there we was and here they was. Malden drew another cartoon called Bloody Ridge, which captured the necessity of climbing each mountain in turn to capture the ridge. In this fight, the chemical mortar battalions, including the second, brought the 4.2 inch chemical mortar. With a range of about 4,000 yards, this 4.2 inch mortar with a rifled barrel could take out point targets such as machine gun nests or buildings and throw a continuous smoke screen to block the German eyes on the heights. The Rapido River was widely thought of as the last river. On the other side of it, instead of another mountain, was the Leary Valley, 75 miles of open land which led to Rome. In this terrain, the Allied armor could exercise its full strength and make light of the weak German defenses when they were not dug in on the mountains. Far to the north at Anzio, the Allies planned an invasion to cut off the German lines of communication and supply all along the Italian boot. In an attempt to draw German reserves south and away from the Anzio invasion, General Mark Clark planned a crossing of the Rapido River on the night of January 20th, 1944. The crossing was to be made in small footbridges and rubber boats. The rubber boats didn't inspire much confidence in the average soldier, and that turned out to be an omen. When the time came, some boats were sunk by gunfire, some were swept away in the current, and very few men made it to the other side. Once there, they were greeted with a withering machine gun fire and, and mortar barrages and pinned down, unable to go forward or go back. When daylight came, they would be slaughtered. But A Company and B Company of 2nd Chemical Mortar Battalion had picked out gun positions that would enable them to lay smoke on the river positions and block German observation of the men desperately trying to get back across the river. This was the Battle of the Rapido Crossing, in which 2nd Chemical Mortar Battalion played a key role in rescuing untold numbers of American troops. Let's experience that battle now, as told by the memories of three men who were actually there. Good morning, Major James Quimby. How you doing, sir? I'm PFC Pasco. Good morning, sir. I'm First Lieutenant Dave Doodle. Good morning, guys. So I don't know how you guys came up to the Army. I came into the Army through ROTC, uh, then uh, came to MOS through artillery. Uh, from there, I went to the Old Guard. Uh, that was fun. There was, at that time, there was only one, Mallard's, Mallard's Street. Uh, I had a chemical engineering degree. So my commander asked if I could join the uh, or attend training for the unit gas officer training. So I attended there, and then from there uh, I went into the chemical warfare service and uh, headed over to Europe and was with the 141st Regimental Combat Team. This sounds pretty good, sir. Uh, I didn't get the chance to do all that. I got drafted right when I turned 18. Um, I wanted to go down and enlist myself, but the Army, they drafted me, and I went to basic training in AIT in 1942. I was a combo specialist, and after that I went straight to war. How about you? Uh, I, was pretty, I was pretty much the same way. I got drafted in 1941. Um, 
I found myself in 1942 as a second lieutenant at the Edgewood Arsenal, and then I was on my way to the second separate chemical battalion. Okay, well, as soon as I got over there, when I went to war, I was placed on a transport of ship with a bunch of other guys that I'd never seen again. I didn't know where I was going or what I was going to be doing. I was assigned to Charlie Company and Second Chemical Battalion. How about you, sir? So where we were over there, uh, you didn't know, but we were near a town called San Angelo, uh, in the European continent, and uh, we made our way over to the Rapido River area, uh, which is off by the Leary Valley. Uh, so the purpose for us when we were over there, it sounds like we were all within the, the same area there, just different companies. Uh, we were trying to take over a river crossing to gain position in the Leary Valley to allow the uh, armor units to come in so we could head towards and take over Rome. Okay, that kind of reminds me of some of the things that I had to do when I was over there. I set up a lot of comma wire in order for us to have communications we were laying down smoke. And uh, my OIC at the time, he couldn't get in contact with our higher headquarters. So I went on mission with them the very next morning. We got pinned down by the Germans and we overcame a lot of heavy, heavy gunfire from the Germans. And once I ran the wires, uh, my OIC, he was able to call higher headquarters in order for us to lay down a smoke screen in order for us to get across Rapido River. That makes sense. Uh, uh, I got. I became the first platoon Alpha Company platoon leader, and my mission was uh, I actually got assigned to support the 143rd uh, RCT 36 Infantry Unit, and our our goal was to smokescreen them for a mile on the Rapido River so that they could cross. I sent you guys uh, on wooden foot bridges and river boats. When I first got over there, I was with Battalion. Uh, took over command of a couple companies just in and out as they needed me to as uh, commanders were coming in and out. Uh, and then right before the, about a week before the Rapido River crossing, I took over command for Bravo Company. Okay, yeah, I remember uh, seeing the 143rd RCT out there. Um, at the end of the at the end of our mission, the last thing I remember is crossing that wooden bridge, getting getting myself and the rest of the four team members that was left after we got um, took out. Took, a majority of my team got took out by the Germans. It was only four of us left, and we crossed the riverbed in order to get in contact with the 43rd RCT for our combat defensive uh, manning positions. How did the war end for you? Well. Uh, I learned a lot through getting out of, uh, going in and out of command. Uh, so we had a lot of, there's a lot of mountains up there. A lot of times the Germans would be up in the mountains. Uh, we did a lot of our training was on flat areas. Uh, so when I was in command, we learned that if we would pop the smoke, shoot off the uh, mortar rounds down in the, the valley, give them time to make their way up to the top of the, the mountain there and just keep laying smoke down. Uh, it would eventually just give us a nice smoke screen there. Okay. That makes sense. So uh, it was basically a long hours of, on the 20th in the, in the middle of the night, we, uh, 44, we got the call that it was unexpected really to have lots of smoke screens because it turns out that the infantry unit hadn't actually made it across the river as fast as they anticipated. So we were up for, I was up for 36 hours straight, um, actually doing that. And as a result, the end result was uh, most all my guns, they all, all went down. And I had to call up, and that was after 36 hours of shooting. And I had to call up, and I remember the, the quote that I said, it was, uh, your smoke screen is about to end. We've still got ammo, but we don't have any guns to shoot. So I took, uh, three platoons and uh, we had to go set up two sections of guns uh, with two guns each at two mortar guns each at each section uh, and we set them up upstream of the Rapido River there uh, and we were laying smoke 
smoke screens for the 141st and uh, the 143rd there. 141st, I remember they were crossing upstream and the 143rd crossed downstream. Uh, but uh, I remember we laid 18, 18 hours of continuous smoke. Uh, at first, they called for high explosive or HE mortars. And then after that, daylight hit and we heard the battalion commander come over the radio just asking for nothing but continuous smoke. So we did that for 18 hours. Yeah. 18 hours. I remember the, the barrels were so hot that I actually had to tell the soldiers to pour water on the barrels because we'd already swapped out 16 at that point. Yeah, well. I remember after the smoke screens were up and the soldiers, seeing the soldiers, because as they were crossing, they were getting continuously hit with small arms fire and, and mortar rounds. Uh, I remember seeing the, the soldiers, they were battered and some were bandaged, some had untreated wounds. They just hardly walked. Some of them just seemed like they were, they were out of it. Uh, some were using their weapons as crutches. Uh, vivid, vivid memories of all of that. And I even remember soldiers would be walking down the road and then just walk right into the ditch. They fall down in the ditch and wake up and come to and look around and get right back on it. Yeah, I remember telling my commander, um, I, I, I don't feel like I did much, but if you need me to go back out there, sir, I'd be more than willing to. And he just told me to go get some rest and he'll see me in a few hours. So going back to the story about you saying that you've seen soldiers so weary that they just fall into ditches, that reminded me of something I recall. It's actually a personal experience. So when we was on our way to the you know, river, we found, it, and we, uh, we found a good spot to kind of camp down for the night. And I remember blatantly telling my, my soldiers to uh, make sure to get far enough away from the jeeps because in the mornings those are targets for gunfire. So afterwards, I got out of my Jeep, and I went through the darkest to the and stuff, thinking I'm far enough away from the Jeep, and then I just calmed down for the night. Um, I woke up to German gunfire from a ship, a uh, plane was shooting down really low, and I looked for cover, and I see my Jeep 10 feet away from me. So that shows how tired we were all. One of my last memories that day was, uh, I saw a company commander coming up, and uh, he approached me and he said that uh, out of 200 men that he had in his company, he only ended up with 30 left. And talking to uh, some of the other commanders later on, uh, they refused to go into further battles uh, unless they had the chemical battalion detached. I'm pretty sure we all crossed paths out there at one point. We just didn't know who each other was because of all the smoke screens that were out there. It was nice meeting you guys. Nice meeting you guys too. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Barnett. Um, I'm the 63rd Chemical Company. Uh, what it means to be a Red Dragon soldier to me is uh, I'm a VC in 1st Platoon, a Striker Platoon. Being recon, it's sort of different from all the other aspects of being Seaburn. So, um, uh, being in 1st Platoon actually helps me see the greater operational picture of being Seaburn. Uh, we are a brigade asset and we can see the total fight from a commander's perspective and accomplish the, the commander's intent. Hello, I'm uh, Lieutenant Mark Shellhammer from 63rd Seaburn Company. Uh, what it means for me to be a Red Dragon, uh, I started out with 3rd Brigade in the 101st and coming over into the Seaburn world a big change of pace. I was super excited to get after doing my job specifically and not being attached to the uh, infantry unit directly. Uh, I fell in love with it immediately. Uh, being able to be the purest element of combat support, drive recon and uh, mounted recon as 63rd Seaburn does as a response company. It's a unique opportunity uh, and I recommend it to anyone.